Hello everyone, it's Julie from Camellia Crafts Designs. Welcome and welcome back. I've got a nice, easy, simple, quick project for you today. I know I always say that and then I do an hour long video, but this is quick, it's easy and it's simple. This might be a bit of waffling along the way. So, what is it you may ask yourself? Well, I've made some writing boards. I've had a couple of people ask me about writing boards and I think this is a nice, simple way of making them. It doesn't involve layers of Mod Podge and I don't like doing things like that. It's too sticky, too icky, too messy. I've just basically used my laminator. So you will need a laminator for this. Or it has been said that you can use laminator sheets with an iron. I've never personally tried it. So if it goes wrong, don't blame me. <laughs> so maybe, maybe Google using laminated sheets with an iron. It does supposedly work. I've not tried it. I may do one day. So... Yeah, I've just used various types of cardstock. I've used digital designs. I've used some Tim Holtz 12 by 12 papers. I've used some of his backdrops. I've used book page, different thicknesses. I've even used a couple of pages out of an atlas, a road atlas. Yeah, I've managed to get <laughs> my hometown in it, Sheffield. Yeah, and where we used to go on holiday, Skegness, good old Skeggy. Yeah, this one is slightly different to the rest. As you can see, it doesn't have the edge on from the laminator. I'll show you this way and that other way. That one, I've made it in a tag shape. If I just show you the ones I've already got in some journals, that one, I don't know whether that one's going to stay. I might change ribbon colour. I like the tag, not too sure about the ribbon colour on that, bit bright. But you can also, also use it as a bookmark, I suppose, can't you? Use it as a bookmark. It's not going anywhere when it's got that floof on the top. So that's another writing board. I've made that one tag shaped. That's an Edith Holden book page. And that was a piece of thicker cardstock I used with that, or it would have been too flimsy. I like to leave the back blank as well because you can use a dry wipe marker to write on these if you wanted this to be a note that you could stick on your fridge. Yeah, or I don't know, just leave it hanging around. Leave it sticking out, <laughs> I don't know, mess in your kid's bedroom, whatever. Yeah, or you just want to make a few notes on what you want to journal about in a session. You can write those down when you've completed your journal and you can rub them out and reuse this. Yeah, that's the thinking behind it anyway, but that's my favourite one. I think it needs a couple of beads on there though. So that's that. I've done another tag shape one, not for anything on top yet. That was a piece of card between two book pages again. So yeah, I'll tell you what they are as and when we go on. I'll show you this type first. Oh, if you look there, I did put a few little fussy cuts on. Yeah, it is okay, but I wouldn't want to use that side as my writing board side because those bridges might send your pen off in a wonky direction. Oh yeah, what is a writing board? If you don't know, I'll show you this. I've done one in this one as well. This writing board, I've put some beads on top. So again, you can use it as a book a bookmark, page marker. Or if you forgot to put it in when you've shut your journal, you can just slide it in after. Let's show you this one. This one, I've just tucked it in back. Where's... what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's not on back page, is it? You silly woman. There it is. So, yeah, I quite like that. I made this one to measure for this journal. Others I just did a bit random. So I've just put beads on that match the beaded dangle. I'm not going to be doing any beading today because I did a video recently on this. I will link that one if you want to know how to do the beads on the top. It's the same principle, we're just putting it on to our writing board slash bookmark. Uh, yeah, that's it. So that can go up there out of your way while you're using it as a writing board. So that's the purpose of a writing board. If you've got a bumpy, highly embellished page there and you've got this page you want to write on, pop your writing board in and it will allow you to write. You've got that firm surface to rest on. I like that these are flexible as well. I think that's better than having a really stiff. Yeah, I just do. I do. So let's show you how I made it. Pop these journals out of the way because they're just going to get in my way, aren't they? You know it. It takes me approximately five minutes for my desk to look like a bomb site. I'll, I'll leave these to hand there as my examples. I do like that one. That were original one that were going to go in that other journal, but it's a bit little. But they're so slim line, I might put them both in. I can do that if I want. Right, what we're we going to make the first one out of? 
I'm going to make it nice and simple and I'm going to do it with some book pages. So what have I got here? I've got two A5 laminating pouches out. I'll show you the pack so that you know. Oh, it's here. This brand happens to be Deskit because that's the brand I bought last time. I've not had, yeah, I just get random brands. These are 150 microns. I will put the conversion on the screen because, again, I forgot to look that up. I'm in UK. We go on Europe measurements and we measure ours in micron. It's different, isn't it, in US and some other countries. So I'll tell you what that is. It'll be on the screen. Or oh, it should have been on the screen. So, yeah, that's a pack of eight to... It lasts me forever. If you've watched my previous laminator video, you've perhaps got loads of these waiting to use them up. So yeah, I've just grabbed a couple of those and I'm going to pick a book page. I'm going to move my tea after a quick sip. Ah, oh, that's nice. Yorkshire tea bags. So I don't knock it over. Right, I love that one. I also love that one. If I want to make it a tag shape I want something with a bit more white up top so what have we got I like that I did I thought I'd got one cut to a single page already I'd cut the edges off some what have we got oh that's pretty but it's got the roots on we're not a root fan oh I had a lovely red one somewhere I'm an absolute nightmare for losing stuff it's gone it's gone where's it gone <laughs> I sound like I'm talking to a baby. Where's it gone? Let's play peekaboo. There, I want to do that one. Silly woman, get your chopper. I'm just going to chop the edge of this page off. But like I say, you can use anything. This might be particularly good if you've got some old uh, books where the pages are quite fragile. Because this will protect it. So, oh, they're both pretty. I think I want that one with a bit of colour on. Put the rest out of the way now i grabbed this book because this book has got an awful lot of blank pages so i just want a blank page for the back of that there aren't any more blank pages in the book that came from that's not a bad color match it's not best but it's not bad so i've got that or you could use a piece of thick card i've i've got Oh, that's paper, isn't it? We want some card. Yeah, I've got everything to one side. Yeah, this is quite thin card, plus it were a bit too creamy for that. So I'm just going to layer that up. I'm going to layer those three up. And that, fe that feels quite sturdy then. So grab the trimmer again. And I'm just going to cut these others to the size of this. But before cut it I'm gonna glue it so back of that page I'm not putting loads on and don't put it anywhere near the edge because if it squeezes out when it's in the laminator the laminator sheet doesn't tend to want to stick I'll show you what I mean I oh, are doing some experimenting can you see there I put a lot of glue on just to see what would happen and where it's squidged out the laminator sheet hasn't sealed yeah because it hasn't sealed, I don't know why. <laughs> it's a glue thing. So, I'm going to pop that one. I'll try and pop it down to the corner. I don't go as many cuts to my cover. Ooh. But as with all card and paper, it's not always square, is it? Especially book pages, they can be very unsquare. So, that's that. I'm then going to stick this one to that back corner. So. Just a couple of lines up top, up and down, top to bottom, up top. And I'm going to pop that there. There we go. And then I'm going to bring my chopper back. I think I should get this in my little one. And I'm using my front book page as my guide as to where to cut. Yeah, the other one was just about as wide. So, just cutting a little bit off. The size is the size it's going to be. Yeah. I'll, I'll measure it when I've done. 
I just want to cut enough off there to make the uh, image sort of central. That looks good. So it's become four and one eighth wide that. Yeah, I like that. I'm just going to take a little bit off the bottom. And I'm going to make this one tag shaped. Now this is how I do it. Something like this. I'm guesstimating where I want it to be so I'll cut that off now I'm going to take that's that way around I'm going to take one of the pieces I cut off I'm going to move it over there and I'm going to cut about the same off again you can do it with scissors I do it with your trimmer I'm using the edge of my blade to line up probably would be easier on my tiny trimmer but I ain't looking for perfection. That'll do me. That's an even enough tag. I like that. I'm just going to switch my laminator on to warm up. While I'm just going to give this a little bit of an ink. Yeah, I've got a little bit of vintage photo and walnut stain on my dobe because yeah, I just pick up whichever one. I think I want to round those bottom corners as well. Because they're a little bit sharp, a little bit offensive. I'm just going to use my small one. If you want to round those off, you can. I'm not too fussed about that. I can live with that. Just that. So, inking for Phyllis while the laminator warms up. Might have to have another dip in the ink. I mean, it doesn't seem very sturdy, that. But once it's laminated, it will be sturdy enough. It will also be, well, is it waterproof? Well, it depends. Are you going to journal in bath? Are you going to journal when it's raining? Uh, I don't think you're going to need your uh, writing board to be any more waterproof than your actual journal, are you? Well, if you spill a cup of tea on it, I suppose. Yeah, your journal's ruined, but oh, look, you've got a writing board. Wow. <laughs> right. Ooh, I'm going to put rubbish in bin. That's a new one for me, isn't it? Put me rubbish in bin. Wow. Wonders will never cease. Hmm. We're nearly warmed up. So I'm going to get my laminating sheet. Like I said, this is a matte one. I don't like the shiny. With the matte ones, it's, you can't, can't tell at first glance that something's actually laminated. And I'm popping the top of my tag up to my sealed edge making sure it's pretty straight yes I'm gonna waste a bit of laminating sheet but I find it seals better if you cut it down and the edge doesn't seal it makes a bit of a mess so that's that oh and we're warm enough right this is my laminator I'll let you see it go through because there's something quite satisfying isn't there about it Oh, in shot we are. Whee. That's it. Do, 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 do. Gets noisy this laminator. I've not had it that long, this one. My old one is just, oh, it's so messy. I put all sorts through it. I put my tea dyed paper through to dry it. Well, I did when I used to dye my own. I've been rather lazy and bought it off of eBay the last couple of times. From a lovely lady called Marty. A linker, because I've forgotten the name of a shop now, so I'll put it in description. I might just pop Marty's name in description of all my videos, because that is something I'm, I now buy regularly. Right, if you look, yeah, some bits have not sealed perfectly. I think when you're laminating something quite thick, that can happen. So I'm just going to pop it through again sideways. I was expecting that. And I'm not, I was. <laughs> Have a sip of tea. Oh, for everyone who spotted my bracelets and wondered what it said, it says birth giver. Yeah, that's my daughter's idea of being sarcastic. She has since made me another one that says mama. Yeah, that one glows in dark. It's a bit freaky at night when you wake up and your arm's glowing. You think you've gone radioactive. Yee. There we go, that's sealed a lot better. I'm just going to give it one more because I'm not happy with how that side's sealed at all. So I think I'm going to start at this side. Whee. 
Well, you can just keep putting it through as many times as you need to, till it's sealed. I find the thicker the thing is you're laminating, the more times you've got to put it through. Oh, that's looking much better this time. Come on, stop juddering. I'm going to get my chopper at the ready. There you go. Right, oh, that keeps your hands lovely and warm, that. Right, so that's that. And all I'm going to do now is cut it down. Right, I'm leaving. I'll measure this for you. On the sealed edge itself, you get it's exactly one eighth of an inch, which is one, two, my eyes are going funny, two or three millimetres. You know, when I try to look between two and three, and your eyes jiggle from side to side like playing tennis. Yeah, that happened. So, two or three millimetres, but exactly one eighth of an inch. Now, I know that's about distance between my cutting blade and edge of my guard, so I'm lining mine up on edge of my guard and cut so there you go we've got that that was smidging wonky but I don't think there's any wonky donkey police about and cut again yeah looking good and then I'm gonna cut across my tag shape corners bit guesstimated that one bit guesstimated and Again, so there we have it. I'm now just going to grab this, will go through my laminator sheets. This corner punch, if I'd got, yeah, when you, I make the next one, you'll see this corner punch does not want to go through it. Now, if you find they're a little bit sharp and offensive, I'm not going to round them with corner punch, I'm just going to come in and just take that sharpness off. There we go. Just do that. Just eyeball it. Have I done all four? No, that's that one. Needs doing. See, I can't even count to four these days. That's that. Now I'm going to make this one into a tag topper. So I'm going to grab my crocodile. You don't have to do that. You can just clip that into your book with a bulldog clip, a paper clip, you can pop it this thin enough to be able to pop in a pocket so that is easy with them. Grab yourself some what sits woman? Eyelets. You had them out ready, you've lost them. What's new? I've got some eyelets, they're not the ones I've been using all day, I've no idea where they've gone. Could be anywhere, my desk's too tidy to find them. But I've got these, I bought some new ones in colours. I'll tell you what we're doing now, we're actually looking for some of these manual eyelet setting tools in particular sizes. And I found this one that actually has the size on, it's for 5mm eyelets. So I won't get wrong size when I'm trying to match up the eyelet tool with the eyelet and these are all five millimeter eyelets they're slightly bigger than the ones that come with this which are three sixteenths of an inch it's there's always a slight difference in that changing from imperial to metric isn't there so i've got these five millimeter it was cheap to buy this with the tools as just to buy the tools so i thought mm, why don't you have a lot woman of the ones that gave a size that is oh i'm going to put that red one on because it matches my berries I do like to waffle, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm not sorry. If you don't like waffling, I think you're watching the wrong video. <laughs> I think we've established that by now, haven't we? Whee. Right. I'm not going to use the manual eyelet tools because it'll just give me an idea call that banging today. I can't be doing with it. Right, so I'm going to use these 5mm ones. Now, try and put that in. Oh, it does actually just fit. Oh, that's... that's if it doesn't fit, just come in with your eyelet tool and make a slightly bigger hole. That, that surprised me that. Oh, I'm liking these. Cherry red eyelets. I know you can dye them with alcohol inks, but I don't have many alcohol inks. And it's a faff. It just really is a faff. And in my experience, the colour comes off. 
Maybe I do it wrong, I don't know. There we go. Oh, I quite like them. Nice cherry red eyelet. And I'm just going to bob some seam binding in that. Grab your seam binding, woman. I think it needs some green. I think we've got enough red, haven't we? What we got in his colours. Seam binding, as always, from the lovely Erin at the Scrap Cabin Shop. Yeah, it's got to be that, hasn't it? No buts, it's got to be that. I know that is moss. It's my favourite colour. Right, you sit there, mate. Don't need you again for, like, 30 seconds or so. And I'm just going to pop this in top. Oh, maybe that will wrap around somewhat at one point and then I change my mind about colour. Yeah, that's highly likely with me. And I'm going to make it into a yummy bow, a double bow. Yeah, let's use all of this, make a big fat juicy bow. So how long's that piece when somebody asks? It is, it's about 45 inches long, yeah. I've doubled my measurement, it was 22 and a bit. It's about 45 inches long. Just going to make them roughly the same size, same length, should I say. And I will tie it. And then I'm just going to... I think this one might go much nicer in that other journal than the mushroom one. This having a green ribbon. And there we go. So that's that's one. That's a giant tag, writing board, whatever you want to call it. Depends on the size of your journal, doesn't it? How big you're going to make your writing board. So that's that one. Hello, I'm back. If you didn't notice, I'd gone. I didn't know I was going. Kids were home from school. Desk were a mess. Brain went, so I just stopped for a bit. Right, I'm back to do the second way now. We're going to do one like this. Yeah, just a writing board that I'm going to clip into the back of my journal. I want to make one for this journal. And I just want it. This one happens to be a quite a nice size, perhaps a bit wider than that. Yeah. So that's it. Well, yeah, that's a bit wider. It wants to be, but height-wise, is perfect. And I'm just going to clip it in the back like so. Yeah, I've decided I don't want any more floof coming out at the top of this one. I like that look better than any ribbon. Yeah. So take that back out. Now, I did want to make it out one of these digital receipts that I'd scanned and printed. You can get these on my Buy Me A Coffee site. Most of you probably know that already. But I don't have one long enough. Or if I do, then it's too wide and I'd have to cut it up in a weird way. And I don't want to do that. So I had a quick squint in my Tim Holtz backdrops because there's a lot of faux receipts in there. And I came up with these two. Yeah. I like that and I like that. I don't know which one to go for though. I've got a few bits of my digital tea dyed paper. I thought I'd got two different colours. Hmm. Where's the other gone? Here it is. I've put it away with all my digital receipts. So I don't know. That's very warm. And that's quite cool. That would go nice with that. That would perhaps go nice. That's a bit light for that. I'm going to use that one. That's my decision made. I'm going to use that one and I'm going to use that. So, I know I can't have the full width of that, so I'm going to have to cut something off. I don't know what I want to cut off. Let's have a look see. So if you need to make one a particular size, this... Yeah, so... Yeah, I've got to lose a lot of the height. So maybe if I... I might just cut, have it starting at the top of that box that'll be perfect that won't it where it's a school quarter yeah I'm going to cut that off now to be honest and I've said don't I don't know if I've said it yet don't cut your papers down to the size you want and to be finally but I just need to cut that off that can then be used for something else yeah that's going to be the perfect height yeah that'll be lovely and I'm going to have to cut a little bit of the width off. But I'm going to do that after I've done the laminating. You'll see why as we go along. Right, so that's going to be my front. That's going to be my back. Or is that going to be my back? Oh, I like that. I'll have that as back. So I'm going to put those together. Turn the laminator on to warm up, woman. You come back saying you're organising it. It was just a plain fib, weren't it? Because you're not. 
you're not organised. Oh, there's no lid on my glue stick, so that'll probably be dried up when I start using it. Lordy, lordy, don't worry, I've got some spares. Right, so I'm going to put these in my laminator sheet. I'm hoping these are the hardest bit sometimes. Uh, it don't matter that bits are sticking out, it don't matter. Don't panic. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Wee, as long as we get that laminator sheet stuck to the front. Now, I don't want that sticking out at edge so that we lose bits we're going to need. There we go. That's better. So when it's warmed up, that's going to go through. Move your bits out at way. Oh, it has warmed up. 30 second warm up this one. When you get it out from cold, it don't warm up in 30 seconds. But for repeat uses, it supposedly does. Right, so just pop that in and let that go through. We're going to do a bit of cutting and faffing afterwards. Right, when that's gone through, the next thing we need to do is we need to cut this to exactly the size we want our writing board to be. We're going to cut these after with a knife. Oh yes, I'm going to get the knife out. Don't worry, I'm getting better at it. There were no blood last time, were there? I think I stabbed myself with a pin recently. I've not done any damage with a craft knife. I'm getting much better. Whee! Come on, you can do it. Oh, it's so warm, this. Cost of living crisis, can't afford to put your eating on. Get some laminating done. I don't know how much electricity it costs to use a laminator, so that might be a false economy. Don't listen to me, I talk absolute tosh. Oh, that's nice. That cooled down pretty quick. <laughs> it's because I don't have my eating on. Right, so I'm going to get my Tim Holtz trimmer out to cut this. It cuts chipboard lovely. You can cut chipboard with many other kinds of rotary trimmers. I find they're better than guillotines right so how big did we say we wanted it i've no idea we wanted it as tall as this one didn't we and as wide as book <laughs> so how tall is that one i've got a ruler that we haven't lost and foot left to fall on the floor here we go gotcha so oh that's seven and three quarters get journal back out measure journal woman measure journal you know what you're doing sometimes hmm eight maximum would be good so we'll perhaps just see how long it is when we've cut them holes off there's a lot of different factors that might decide how big this one's gonna be right so oh when i've cut holes up it could be longer than eight but i think eight's long enough i'm gonna cut it just short of eight because then i can neaten that edge up because bearing in mind this has come off back of a paper pad and it's had a bit of hammer over its uh, short life. And how wide did we say? Da, 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 da. A maximum of five and a half would be too wide. So a maximum of five and a quarter is going to be perfect. Can we get that out of this and get rid of all this scabby bit on the edge? No, we're going to have to leave a bit of scabby bit on the edge. It'll be right. Don't panic. So we'll make it five and a quarter wide, eight tall. I'm happy with that edge because that was my cut edge when I made another one. I'm just going to cut that rough, rough bit off. So eight tall, five and a quarter wide. I'm saying this to remind me, not you. <laughs> oh, well, I'm good if it reminds you too. Because you know I'm going to forget those numbers as we move forward, don't you? So I need to write them down. I think I'll write them on. I've got a bit of paper here from a previous one. Five and a quarter inches by eight. Ah, not forget what you're doing, will you, woman? So, I've got this. I've got this. Oh, look. That didn't seal at that side. Ooh. I've put big trimmer away because I can get away with using a little trimmer for this. It's much easier for you to see what I'm doing. So now I'm just going to cut where the top of that is. Cause that's where I want it to be. Yeah, so I've cut along the top of that. And can you see what happens then? Look, look, it's already happening. It's not actually sealed as a pouch because we didn't leave enough round edge. 
we've now just got one piece of card stuck to one side and one piece of card stuck to the other which is what we wanted it's not gone wrong we wanted that to happen this time so I'm just cutting I'm just going to cut, leave a little bit extra there is that no, that's that with a sealed edge, so I need to cut a bit more off. It's still stuck. So, yeah, we've got two pieces now. Now, hopefully, because this is quite a big one, that is still going to be at least as long as my hardboard. Oh, yeah, it is. Can you see? Yeah, that's perfect. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cover one side of this chipboard entirely with glue stick so grab your glue stick woman you put lid on it come on you can't have lost it since you put lid on it you're not that bad are you really here it is <laughs> just launching into telling me sent off there so get lots on get plenty on it's quite a porous chipboard this one as well so it needs plenty now reason i like glue stick for this is it is a dry adhesive it does stick really well when you're sticking card and paper together, which is always sticking. We're not actually sticking any plastic laminated sheets. You don't get lumps in it, she says, just making a big lump. But can you see it's spreading out? I just find it easier to get even coverage before it starts to dry. I'm just going to ask my other child to be a little bit quiet because I'm still filming. Child! 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 Shush, I'm filming. What? I'm still filming. There you go. The child will be a little bit quieter now. <laughs> they won't be silent. But yeah, one worried the home. That other one's come home. And they're all giddy now. Now they're at different schools, colleges, they actually enjoy seeing each other at end of day. They don't come home arguing because they've been arguing on the way home. Right, I've got plenty on outside as well especially outside now you might think that were a bit excessive but i want plenty of glue on i don't want it coming apart right now do i want to line any i just want to line oh it's going to be really tricky not to lose some of them words so i'm just going to have to go for it if i lose some words i lose some words the world won't end i'm going to line this top edge up and if I lose some, I lose some. Before I stick the rest of the whole thing down, I'm just going to make sure this top edge is lined up. Because I want at least one edge that I don't have to come in with the craft knife on. Right. Then I'm going to get my bone folder and any other bits that's hanging around my desk. And I'm just going to stick that down. Flip it over. And I'm going to go to town with my bone folder. Middle to edge then any excess glue is going to come out towards the edge and help stick my edge. Yeah, glue stick is really easy to wipe off the edge. That one dries clear. If I get any stuck to this laminated bit on the front, it's not going to be a big problem because I can take it off with a baby wipe, with a damp cloth with one of them glue rubbers with my fingers it just balls up doesn't it now that's seeming pretty good yeah that seems to be stuck pretty well that top edge is okay and could have been a bit straighter really right i'm going to get my scabby old craft mat now here we go scabby old mat and i'm going to get my craft knife <laughs> can you tell it's gone wobbly because i've done heated stuff on it is that less scabby? Yeah. Right, and I'm going to come in and I'm going to trim. Ideally, wait until everything's dried before you do this, but I'd forget we're filming me and go off and do something else. And did I cut through it? No, because this is quite thick card. Don't cut through the chipboard, woman. So I'm using edge of my chipboard as my guide. There we go. Now that is nice. And it's all stuck. 
I'm going to do the same on these other edges. That edge, I'm going to have to take a smidgen off. No, I can't. It might be raised up a bit. I can't tell. It'll, it'll, I'll live. Stop being a perfectionist. It's a junk journal, not the crown jewels. Yeah, like I said, ideally, wait until everything's dry. You'll find this step easier. Yeah, that's nice. And this last edge. Let's have a look, see. I've got that out a long way, haven't I? be snapping. I'm wearing glasses. Right. Oh, I'm happy with that. Yeah, yeah. We lost E off the end of average, and it's it's pelling. <laughs> hey ho! If if you're fussy about that, make sure you pick something where you're not gonna cut edges off. Oh, but I like that. Yeah, I do. Right, my other piece. I'm now gonna stick this one on the back. So again, I'm going to come in with this. I'm going to get all them bits off edge first. I think it's my ring light makes it's made this a bit gloopy. It's winter. I've not got heating on, and it's a mild day today. I would ask the Amazon device what the temperature was, but everyone else is going to find out their temperature if I do that, aren't they? She's very quiet today as well. Is our Gert Gertrude? That's the name I give to my little Amazon device. If you're not heard a pipe up before with some useless and yeah, something we don't need to know. She's very good at telling me stuff I really don't need to know. And sometimes, I don't know if you have this, you'll ask it something and it'll start off by going, it'll go, Julie. I'm like, ooh. It's very freaky when it says my name. Julie. The temperature is. I'm like, no, don't use my name. You're an anonymous robot. You're not. I mean, yeah, I might have had you about 10 years, but it does not mean we're on first name basis. I can call you Gertrude. I'm not too happy about you calling me Julie, to be quite honest. Right, there we go. Got loads of glue. Belt and braces with glue, as Fiona, as Miss Paintalot says. I do like that woman. <laughs> I'll link her channel as well, because I've mentioned her. I do that sometimes, then people are like, who's that you're talking about? Right, I want, I'm trying to get two sides lined up here, so I only have to cut twice. Yeah, that's it. I've got a bit messier on this side, but it doesn't matter. All that glue that's squidging out, it'll help seal your edge and prevent it coming apart over time. Oh, no, look at that. It's not up to edge. That's better. I like this little bit of wiggle room you get when you use lots and lots of glue stick as well. So go towards that edge first, woman. Because that weren't quite up to edge, but it is now. If you've got one of them big wide bone folds, they're ideal for this. I've got one somewhere. I bought one, used it once, and then I just rarely see it now. Right. That looks good. Now, all I'm going to do now, before I uh, cut that, because it's my second side, I'm just going to let it dry for about five or ten minutes and say hello to my other child, and I shall be back with you. You'll not notice I've gone. It'll be instant for you. It'll be like, click, I can't click my fingers, especially when they're covered in glue. And I'm back. That's dry a little bit. Yeah, a lot drier. Yeah, so it's still lovely and sealed at all edges. Well, I've, I've just rubbed glue sticking. Ooh, that one. Oh, it's still fine. Right, now I'm just going to cut round this with... I've only got two, edge, two edges to cut now with this. Whee! Oh, I'm getting much better with these craft knives. Practice really does make perfect. I've been scared of craft knives for years, she says. Slicing a thumb off. No, I didn't. Honest. <laughs> now, if you don't like fancy... Oh, I need to take a bit off that side. Yeah, just a little bit. Just a little bit off that side. Yeah. 
yeah that's good now if you don't like offensive corners you're gonna need a big chompy chopper if you've made it with hardboard like this that little one just won't go through it that's not even a chopper that's my crocodile <laughs> Yeah, you want to put holes in it, use that one. That one's for holes, this one. Lordy. Now, I can only do the quarter-inch corner because I dropped this and broke it. And apparently, I can get a replacement from We Are Memory Keepers. I did try when I did it. I, think, I don't know if it's different in UK or what. But I did I try with them or did I try? I tried with Amazon where I bought it. And that was worse than useless. Because I'd had it more than a year. Whee. I'll try with me. We are memory keepers, right? So that's all my corners chomped. Ooh, lovely. Now I'm just gonna. If you want to ink this now, best thing to use would be a waterproof ink. It stays on would be your best ink to use. But even on laminate, I sometimes find the distress ink stays on. So I'm just gonna go a little bit. I don't, I'm not bothered about it coming on there so much. I just want to get, can you see how we've got white edges there? I just want to cover them up mainly. Wee. Yeah, use an old foam. Because it might affect your foam. Light's going a little bit now as well because it's got dark. I've faffed. I've been talking to kids. <laughs> Right, so that's it. That's that's very sturdy, that one, because this piece of chipboard I got quite thick. Now, let's see if it fits. Is this going to fit? Oh, wow, it does. Oh, the thunk it fits perfect. Oh, I quite like that. Grab your... Where have I put that? Do you know, I can lose 50 things, me, while I'm doing a video. I've lost my bulldog clip now. Get a new one out. Get a new one out, mister. There you go. I mean, you could ink it before, but the way I do it to make sure it all lines up and edges aren't going to start peeling, it's hard to know where your edges are going to be. But because we've picked a grungy paper, I'm quite happy with that not inked. I'm going to clip it in there. Oh, that is the sturdiest writing board ever. Let's test that it fits on our, on our pages. So where am I going to do a bit of writing? I have got a lot of blank pages in this book. Ooh, let's do a bit of writing on that page. That's going to fit lovely. And if you want your board to stay put, put your clip back on there. Then you've got your writing board. You can then also, because it's not got other gummins on, well you could leave it there. Wee. Yeah, you could leave it there as your bookmark, I suppose. Yeah, you could. You could, you could. So, I hope that satisfies the few people who've asked me about writing boards. There are other methods, but like I say, I can't be doing with painting things 27 times with Mod Podge and things like that. No, that don't work for me. It's, it's not my bag. So, we've got that one. And we've got that one. There two we've made together today. And as you can see, you could just make one with rounded corners. The ones where you're sealing in both sides with a laminating sheet and your edge on, just the thinner ones, you can ink your edges before you put them together. So that's what we've ended up with. I hope you enjoyed that. Like I said, it is a quick project. It is simple and it is easy. Maybe it took a long time with my waffling, but that's what you're all here for, you keep telling me. So, anywho, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.